This is a sample accounting cycle for merchandising business using perpetual inventory system under sole proprietorship business. Our goal here is to get a grasp of what really are the steps involved in preparing financial statements if we are going to follow the complete accounting cycle. But for simplicity, let's use simple transactions, meaning no complications for the meantime as to freight or shipping terms, discounts, credit terms, inventory, cost flow, and tax. It is best for you to learn and understand the basics first if you are a beginner in accounting. Mixing everything all at once without the basic is a total mess. Hope you will follow along as I try to present this in an easy to digest version. I don't think you will ever find this style in any book, material, or even video that's why I made this for you. The following are the steps that we will follow as we complete the accounting cycle. We will illustrate and discuss in detail each step in this video series. Just a disclaimer, always check with your prof for his or her preference as there will always be some slight variations on how they want the steps to be accomplished. After all, your prof has the last say on your grades. As a tutor who also encounter variations in the sequence or order of the accounting cycle itself, based on experiences with students from different schools and prof, my mission is to minimize confusion. So the first step will be analyzing and journalizing the business transactions. The second is posting to the ledger or T account. Third, preparing unadjusted trial balance. Fourth, determining accounts to be adjusted and journalizing and posting such adjustments. Fifth, accomplishing worksheet for preliminary financial statements, which is an optional step. Sixth, journalizing and posting of closing entries. Seven, preparing post-closing trial balance, also an optional step. And number eight will be preparing formal financial statements. And the last one, which is the journalizing, the reversing entries, which is also an optional steps depending on accounting practice being followed. Let's start with the following transactions. September 2, the owner of Forever Young, Ms. McKinney's Mapute, invested 80,000 cash to start her buy and sell of anti-aging cream. So if we are going to journalize this, the entry will be debit cash, credit, Makinis Maputi Capital, and the explanation would be to record Maputi's initial investment of 80,000. So the debit will be cash, 80,000, and a credit Makinis Maputi Capital, 80,000. So the reason why you debit cash is because there's an increase in cash due to that investment and that investment also increases the capital account of Bakinis Maputi. So always remember that when there's an investment it's always an increase in asset accounts and a credit to a usually capital and some other accounts it depends. So but for this one we have the assets and capital accounts only. Then the next transaction is September 3, paid 3 months rental for a small kiosk amounting to 15000 in total and then let's use expense method. The journal entry will be a debit to rent expense because the instruction is to use the expense method and then since we paid for that in cash so we will credit cash so that's a, both a debit and a credit to 15,000 amount so rent expense 15,000 debit credit cash 15,000 the next transaction is September 4 bought 40,000 worth of cream from Chin Chan she paid for the 30 percent down payment and the remaining to be paid 20 days after so here since this is buy and sell of anti-aging cream so we will use merchandise inventory so when Makinis Maputi bought merchandise 
or cream that's a debit to merchandise inventory because we're increasing merchandise inventory account by debiting 40,000 and then a credit to cash 12,000 because of the down payment and another credit accounts payable dash chin chan so that we can recognize right away that the accounts payable is to chin chan so that's 28,000 how do we get 28,000 and 12,000 the 30 percent down payment and the remaining balance out of 40,000 will be paid 20 days after and then the next transaction is September 5 bought store supplies in cash 2,500 again we will use expense method this is just for illustration purposes only so the journal entry will be on September 5 a debit store supplies expense 2500 because we're instructed to use the expense method and then credit cash 2500 because we paid for it so we lose money then on September 6 bought few chairs a table and rocks for 8000 on account from Mandayu foam so that's on account so the journal entry will be furniture and fixtures debit 8000 and a credit to accounts payable dash mandayu foam 8000 on september 7 sold anti-aging cream for 12000 cash with a cost of 7500 Paid transportation for the delivery to customer 150 okay the journal entry on September 7 will be a debit to cash 12,000 and a credit to sales revenue 12,000 actually for this illustration we will just separate each entry we will not do the compound entry to minimize the confusion so the first entry will be related to the sale of the merchandise so which is paid in cash so that's a debit to cash we receive cash 12,000 and then we will recognize sales revenue because this refers to the sale of merchandise so we will use sales revenue 12,000 then another debit for the cost of the merchandise being sold so since we are using the perpetual inventory system we will always have to record the cost of goods sold or the cost of sales every time we are selling our merchandise inventory so the debit cost of sales or you you can use also cost of goods sold that's a debit to 7500 in a credit to merchandise inventory 7500 then the last entry for September 7 would be a debit to freight out account because of the shipping transportation cost paid by Makinis so debit freight out 150 credit cash 150 this is freight out because as a seller the transportation out meaning that the cost of transporting that goods to your customer if you're the one shouldering that you debit freight out or transportation out then September 11 chatted with a prospective customer who plans on placing an order worth 14,000 as a gift to her friends so this transaction should we journalize this or no September 11 we have no entry because our accounts whether it's an it's an asset liability equity revenue or expense doesn't really change at this point so we will proceed to the next transaction which is September 15 
GGSS, a customer finally ordered but for 9000 only on credit. This screen cost 5625 So the journal entry will be on September 15, debit accounts receivable GGSS 9000 because this is a sale transaction on account or on credit. And then a credit to sales revenue 9000 then since this is a perpetual inventory system we will make another or we will prepare another entry for the cost of the merchandise being sold so debit cost of sales or again cost of goods sold 5625 and a credit to merchandise inventory 5625 meaning we are now decreasing MI because we are selling it so, uh, there's no more inventory in our stocks so that's why it's credited it decreases the inventory account it goes to cost of sales then the next transaction will be September 17 sold products with the cost of 21,875 to various customers for cash 35,000 so the journal entry on September 17 will be again this is sales transaction so expect that there's two journal entries that's always true if you're using perpetual inventory system so we have the debit to cash 35,000 the amount received and then again sales revenue 35,000 and another entry debit cost of sales or cost of goods sold or COGS 21,875 and a credit to merchandise inventory 21,875 let's proceed to the next journal entry or the transaction which is September 19 made 50% partial payment to Mandayu foam 